Hello, you're looking at perfection. This is perfection. This is a game that I remember from my childhood. Probably one of the first games that I really remember. This was the game that used to go in the cupboard and come out more regular than any other game that we had. Um, I think I must have had it the first time uh, maybe 1979, 1980 when I when I was um, eight or nine years old. Um, this dates back from 1975 um, and then was re-released, well had revisions in 1977 and 1980. Uh, so obviously this one dates after 1980 so it's probably the the same one as what I had. Um, it certainly looks the same, it's the same colours of I've seen others online and they're red and blue and I think that might be the American market more than this one. Well, well my tripod's not quite tall enough to look over my shoulder but there we go. I'll try to keep the angle as best I can uh, to make viewing easier. Okay, so this is perfection. Let's get the box open. instructions now obviously this is a faulty one uh, or else it wouldn't be in my shed this is not a review channel all the pieces are there uh, let's pop him out okay so the idea of the game is to get your pieces just get a few uh, put it into stuff, push your play field down and put your timer to zero. You then start the clock and try to put 50, uh, 25 different shaped pieces into the correct places before time runs out. If time does run out, the whole play field pops up, scatters your pieces everywhere. Uh, you probably know all this already. So from what I remember is these clocks always start off tick, 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 really, really fast. And then as it gets down to like 20 seconds, it, it starts slowing a bit, going to tick, 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 really building up the tension. And then when it gets zero, it pops. Uh, when it gets 60, rather, it pops. Uh, this one is slow and it doesn't pop. So if I set a timer running, so I'll start the timer and this at the same time. You can already hear that it's struggling a bit on the ticks. It is quite noisy so I hope the levels aren't too bad. It's at 20 seconds now and it is struggling but the timer's only getting to 20 seconds now. So it races ahead and then goes slow. So it's 35 seconds. It's now at 40 and this is only at 30. So this is 10 seconds. It's actually 10 seconds behind. And now going to 50. That's at 40. Now going to 55. Tension's really building. Um, we're going to do it in time. Well, it doesn't matter because it doesn't pop. I wind it on a little bit more. It pops, and then it starts to speed up again. So there's three reasons for me buying this. One is the nostalgia side of it. Um, two is for the repair, and three is I think it's time I introduce my granddaughter to something a bit more advanced. She's coming on four. This is for ages six and over, probably because of the small pieces, possibly because it would scare the life out of a, a child when it pops. 
but uh, I think you know it's time she can handle this my 21 year old daughter on the other hand she can't she she won't even start it ticking she, she's out the room there's only one other video online that I can find that deals with repairing one of these um, but it really doesn't go into many details um, he just shows what's been repaired rather than how he repaired it uh, didn't show the taking apart process so um, so I'll, I'll record everything and try to capture the relevant parts of it so I'll shut up now and I'll get inside So there appears to be two, three, four tabs and they just push across, twist the tab out of the way and then I just have to lever this part up a bit until it pops off. That's the fifth one. Okay, this part we know is good because it pops up and this part so this stops the clock from going back too far because it is overwound so it will continue running after it's popped so the pop position should this here so I wind. Let's get that out of the way. Goes past this. Then when it's ticking, it tick tick ticks. That's what must slow it down on the original game is when it hits here. And then it bing. And that releases that which which makes it pop the stop start button just interferes here it just catches in there Can I so that overwinding it?
I think that might be far enough. We'll let it run around again, see. Stop. So that's now a full wind more than it was when we started. And I've just added a little bit of silicon lubricant into there. This seems to be more than strong enough to pop. So I think I'm going to try and pop it back together. That looks good. This sticker wasn't put on very well. It should be nice and even all the way around. And I think that that was one of the ones that you have to put on yourself. This seemed to be a thing in the 80s where stuff looked great on the adverts and then you got them all excited Christmas day and then you had to spend half an hour putting stickers in the right place. Or not, as the case may be. There's a little tiny tear there, it looks like, oh, I've come wrong, but no, you can't put it right after. It, once it's stuck, it is stuck. We'll do a quick time check on it. Um, I th still think it's not going to be as it should be. But tray down, let's go. Five seconds, that's not too bad. It did seem like it was going to stop at the end there. No, that's great. That's exactly how I remember it. It used to really slow down right at the end and really build the tension up and then pow! So brilliant. Uh, a nice easy fix for me. Um, this just seemed to have been forced round maybe once too many times. Maybe the springs have got weak in, in you know, with age. Um, so wound it, I suppose overwound it once. Well, overwound it twice, but let it run round again. So it's overwound once. That's given it the strength to carry on round and uh, trigger the action. Uh, and then a quick, uh, squirt a silicon lubricant onto the mechanism hopefully that'll be good for another well however many years and then even if it goes again it's so simple inside take it off and repair it again in another 40 years so uh, i'm going to have a quick game now and then i'll wrap the video up okay then so with no editing I'm going to go straight in and see if I've still got what I had in 1980. Yeah, I am cheating. Okay, I'm ready, marks, set, go. Ah. 
come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I've got this. I've got this. Ah, I've not got this. <laughs> first time, first time, and I've done it with a second to go. There we go. So there you have it. Absolute perfection in a box. That is my childhood right there on the bench so I'm really pleased that I've managed to get it going maybe you know it could have been a little trickier but they can't all be epic fixes can they but to me to have this back <laughs> and to be able to now pass it on to my my granddaughter and show her the fun that can be had with such a basic toy all I need now is the follow-on for this, the Superfection, which was like, um, you had to solve a puzzle, and make a little cube out of two pieces and then put it in place. I think there were 16 shapes in all. I don't think that that was ever held as affectionately in the hearts as this one was. I mean, I'm gonna take this to my mum's and we're gonna play it with, with my granddaughter. Um, but yeah, Superfection was, was another great game, so maybe I'll try and have a look out, see if I can get one of them and uh, make the full set. I believe that there was a, a three-part one came out as well. Um, I didn't really look at that, I was just scrolling past looking for videos of this on YouTube. Uh, but yeah, so that's it for now. Um, a lovely little fix, a nice piece of nostalgia. Um, but I'll wrap it up there so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time I've got something in my shed. Cheers, bye now.